Welcome back everyone. I would like to start this section of the video that discuss uh, what's in your course room under your course. And I would like to draw your attention to the Getting Start page uh, where I have basically again my contact information which is also on my syllabi that you will be reviewing later on uh, before you move to this section. I've also provided a welcome letter uh, welcoming you to the 350 online extended campus format uh, for internet and uh, my, you'll find to the bottom of it my contact information again. And, uh, in another section I have what we call a blackboard refresher and this will give students basically some information about what's in their course. The good thing about everyone in this course you should have already completed a number of social work courses and should be very familiar with uh, your course and how to maneuver uh, through the various areas of your course. And so under the Blackboard section you'll have uh, the course requirements which contains papers and projects, uh, discussion, tests and quizzes, uh, basically the course outline uh, that will be provided for you also. Uh, so just be mindful that uh, for evening and internet students, uh, one unit equals to one week. So basically, for every unit, you will have one week to actually complete. Uh, you also have a notification section, which will include announcements, calendar, uh, Blackboard message, and of course, my grade. Then there's a course tool inside that. Uh, normally, you will not be utilizing any of it. Some students do, some don't. You have a resource qu uh, section that looks at uh, tutored service, uh, course evaluation, and Blackboard help. Uh, so just be mindful that if you're not familiar, that will be a good thing to start looking at and clicking on some of those things to actually review. I've also provided you with a sample discussion post and how it should uh, actually look when you post in your initial response. In other words, you need to support your response with something from the textbook uh, peer review article. As you can see from this example, uh, in the initial uh, discussion, this individual posts uh, the Code of Ethics under 1996, looking at section 1.19. Uh, and sexual relationships. And then when you're responding to your peers, you, you're going to also support your uh, post, but then again, you're going to address the individual, so it would be high in the person name you're responding to. And it's okay to say you agree to their response or disagree with their response, as you can see in the example here, but this person said why they agree with it. So once again, I don't want you to just tell me you agree with it. Tell me why you agree with this individual post and support it with something to support that you agree with it. And you'll see the same example in the second post. So you make an initial post and then you're responding to two peers. Be mindful, your initial repost, uh, post should be uh, due on Thursday at 11.59 and then you should be responding to two of your peers no later than Sunday at 11.59. I've also provided a discussion rubrics for you uh, that will tell you what I will be looking at as you go through that process. So just be mindful that uh, you want to look at that because I have the rubrics already in your course that I will be looking at. And when you look at the last part of the rubrics, it says thoughtful responses. Here again, if you respond to two peers and you supported your response, that's 30 points. If you respond to two peers uh, that you followed, but not one was thorough or not appropriately formatted, then you're going to lose points. So here again, this is where you lose points in your discussion. Some students forget that they were supposed to support what they say, and then they'll go back in and do a discussion and say, oh, I forgot what I was supposed to do. I forgot to support my uh, post, and here it is. Uh, that's not the way it should be, because that's an initial uh, post with just the, basically, author and what have you. This is why you need to do that when you actually are doing your response. So just be mindful. I've also provided you with some APA handouts, 
what's going to be important for you is the Court of Ethics, uh, which is by the NASW. So you definitely want to print that out and put it in a binder to include the South Carolina Court of Ethics. So you definitely want to do that. I also provided you with a template for APA style. Now you're doing a, a proposal, so you definitely will need to be using the template. As you go further down, you'll see that I also provide you with a sample uh, research proposal. And what that is basically is a sample proposal that I pulled out from my dissertation that looks at the impact of perinatal loss among adolescent parents. And then I discussed it. Uh, the areas that you need to be responding to in your proposal, uh, utilizing that. Now, of course, uh, my pro sample proposal might be more than 10 pages or seven to eight pages, uh, because that's only because I use more articles to support what I was saying. For you, uh, just be mindful that you want to thoroughly support what you're saying, and if you go beyond seven to eight pages, then that's fine. But just be mindful that I'm looking for you to show me that you grasp the understanding of this assignment, because this will be an assignment that you will also be doing in field. So when you go to papers and projects, here you will find that what's expected of you. So in other words, students will complete the research proposal. And basically, you can find an example of that in chapter 13 of your book. And also, you must design your own consent form, and you can find an example of that in, on page 211 of the text. So here again, you have a research proposal example on, in chapter 13, an example of an informed consent form that's also on page 211 in the text. So what should you be doing with this proposal? You must have an uh, a title page. You must have an abstract. You must also have an introduction. You must have a lit review. You must have a method section. You must have a respondent section, uh, instrumentation section, to include limitation and ethical issue sections. And then you must have a reference. Once again, be mindful that your reference page, your title page and abstract page, do not count as a part of your five to seven pages. That will not do. That's automatically as a part of the template. So when you pull on that template, you will find those things there. The title page, the abstract, and then you're going to find a reference. So basically, if you completed seven pages of, of work with this proposal, then you will have a total of 10 pages, not counting, well, counting the title page, abstract, and reference. So be mindful of that. Don't turn me in seven pages counting the title page reference and abstract. You'll lose points that way. Under the discussion, you have a discussion section that gives you all the discussions assignment. You also have a test and quiz section that will tell you the quizzes. And I, I will provide you with an email with the dates of your exams. And your proctor will also have that information. You have a course outline, and under the units for each week, remember we said that unit each unit is one week. So you have eight weeks of work uh, that's covered from one to unit from unit one to unit eight. And unit one basically discussion it tells you everything you should be doing, and it provides you with chapters of the PowerPoint. And here's that X anyway that I talked about it earlier in the course outline. Uh, where you can be asking your peers or me any questions that you may have. Also, you have a section of questions that you had to answer uh, in, this, in Unit 1, and here are those questions. Uh, do you know? And so, basically, did you review the syllabus? Did you understand the course objectives and student learning objectives? Do you understand the policy in the syllabus? And so everything that I covered in the syllabus, you're going to have an example there. And then have you re, uh, reviewed the student professional development rubric? Uh, so there's a rubric for that also uh, that's in the syllabus. So these are some questions that you're going to be responding in Unit 1. In Unit 2, it follows the same format in which you are required to post your assignments for, for Chapter 3 under Unit 2. 
And basically, you have two assignments in Chapter 3 that you're going to be responding to, uh, that you have to respond to by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. in the second week. So each assignment is going to be due on Sunday. Your discussion, your initial post is due on Thursday at 11.59, and you must resp respond to two of your peers by Sunday night at 11.59. So as you follow the units, you will find similar uh, format as you go through each of the units. And that's the conclusion of this section of the video. Thank you.